Iguanas. Did you guys know that iguanas are invasive and they love to eat the beautiful, lush, tropical landscape plants that everyone is installing in these gorgeous landscapes, at least down here in South Florida? Let me tell you a little bit about our special guests today. We have Michael and Michelle with Humane Iguana Control. They're South Florida natives that got into iguana control in a very interesting way. So you were into landscaping and all of that before you jumped into the iguanas. Yeah, yeah we, we had, had a the business company. for 11 years. Wow, so you guys so you guys have a lot of knowledge and background in what is landscaping. Yeah. Michael had a landscape company for 11 years, so he has a background when it comes to plants. So one day he's in Star Island doing a landscape job, changing out some impatiens, which are annual plants that iguanas love to eat. So we have a property in Star Island that we used to do and they wanted to install flowers. And within a week, you know, they're all eaten up, they're gone. How much how much was the total amount of plants that they had eaten? In the thousands. It was thousands of dollars that were lost due to the iguanas eating them. So imagine that, guys. You're a homeowner listening, or you're a landscaper, and, <laughs> and you have three, four, five, ten thousand dollars worth of plants that the landscapers listening here in South Florida, they know exactly what I'm talking about. It all gets eaten. Like, that's not even warranted at that point. So the, the landlord or the homeowner, they lose that money. Yeah. That's so crazy. The, so I told the property manager, hey, listen, you know, they're eating these plants because they're not putting any baits in the traps. Michael noticed quickly that there was no food in them. And without food, you ain't going to get nothing in the cage. Like, so they had, they had traps there because they knew that there was iguanas. Exactly. No, they had a trapper, a business that... They had a company that... Yeah. So they had a company there to place traps because they knew that there was iguanas already exactly. there. Yeah. So when we checked the traps, they were empty. So the landlord asked him, hey, could you take care of the problem for me? And boom, that's when the light bulb turned on and he saw the opportunity. Wow. So if they don't have any food inside the traps, they're gonna need the flowers. And I go, hey, I'm about to start doing this myself. You know? Yeah, to take care of the problem. Exactly. He goes, uh, give me a price. I was like, light bulb, let's do this. Talk about finding opportunities within the green industry, even when you don't expect it. Look what just fell on his lap an opportunity to now create a new stream and a different adventure for what his future holds. Within one month, he gained the knowledge to give him enough confidence by watching YouTube videos, Googling, reading articles to now open Humane Iguana Control. So I went home, studied for about a week, did all my research, looked up all the local laws, watched videos, you know, to make sure I'm doing everything humanely and mm -hmm. correct. So I gave him a price and it started ever since. Within a month, it was going good. Like, you know what, let's, let's go full throttle. In a month, this. you took it serious, started a business and everything. Yeah. So I didn't, you guys didn't take too long to do yeah. it. It couldn't have come at a better time because COVID had hit and his landscape business was struggling. Okay. Well, doing the landscaping and I was doing the iguanas on the side while maintaining the landscape business. Okay. You know, me and my wife were just hustling, getting the new accounts for the iguanas, you know, talking to clients, networking. Okay. But it came to the point that when COVID came, you know, it affected our landscape business negatively. Okay. You know, we couldn't find employees. Okay. You know, a lot of business closed down. Wow. So it was going downhill. Wow. So I had to come to a point to make a decision whether I keep going with the landscape business or I sell it. As he was growing the iguana business, he realized that the landscape business needed to go. So he was able to sell the complete entire landscape company, not just assets as trucks and equipment, he sold the whole thing. So I ended up selling the landscape business. That's good, know, congratulations. To make, a, yeah, to make a nice profit before I lose everything. By not having the landscape company anymore that he was having to juggle between two, now he could put all his focus and the money that he had earned from selling the landscape company into the iguana company, putting 100% effort in. So let's continue talking with Michael and Michelle to talk about the importance of iguana control. Are you ready to grow? The Plant Movement with Willie Rodriguez of A's Ornamental Nursery in sunny South Florida is the podcast for those in the nursery business, garden centers, landscapers, power growers, and plant enthusiasts. Willie is a passionate leader in the plant movement and has helped others grow their business into multi-million dollar companies. This show will save you time, money, and headaches through top-notch education and by connecting you to experts in the industry. Let's grow. Here's your host, Willie Rodriguez. Tell me some of the things that iguanas do other than just hanging out because they hang out most of the day in the yeah. shade. But yeah. Well, th that's the reason, you know, we wanted to come with you guys and help educate South Florida about the iguanas. They are causing a huge negative impact to our ecosystem, to our native species. You know, one of the things iguanas do, they like to dig burrows. You know, so by them digging burrows, you know, it could cause structural damage. You know, I know there's a story um, in Fort Lauderdale, I think it was, that they, they were digging burrows under like a dam. Mm -hmm. and they cost uh, the city uh, $1.8 million in damage. Wow, to and fix that, it. And that's from digging burrows, you know. So what happens when they dig the burrows with time, you know, with the rain and the conditions, it gets, it gets erosion. You know, so imagine $1.8 million in damage, you know, from lizards. 
No, from yeah. lizards and, and the lizards too. They're also messing up, you know, the ecosystem of the wildlife. Exactly. You know, from from other from turtle turtles is what I read, and also yeah. also owls and other animals like yeah. that as well. Yeah, the, there's an owl called the burrowing owl, mm -hmm. and this owl, what he does is he digs tunnels as well, burrows to lay his eggs. You know, and sometimes and that's a native bird, and that's a native bird, and that's close to extinction actually. Oh wow! Yeah, so it's you know very important that we take care of this issue to avoid, you know, our native species getting extinct because of the one that's not native to here. Sometimes they go in there, they might mess up the, the, the eggs they have. You know, there's even stories I've heard, don't quote me on this, that they've eaten their eggs before. You know, even though the ones are vegetarian. Yeah, you know, the herbivores. The herbivores, you know. Uh -huh. There are known some, some stories that they have, you know, eaten bird eggs. Oh, I'm sure. But it's not common, but it has happened. You know, turtles, owls, you know, bird species as well. And oh, they go in there, they sit on them, they break them. They hit them with their tail. Yeah, yeah. That that that's their basically their, their defense mechanism is their tail. Yeah. Their tail, yeah. That's they their can whip you really nice. Yeah, real nice. I've gotten whipped. <laughs> so I've gotten whipped. Them, the, yeah. I've gotten whipped a couple times. And yeah, well, yeah. I'm sure you're in that world. So yeah. you know, yeah. out of a thousand catches, you're gonna get whipped probably at least a hundred. Yeah, it, it hurts more than my wife whipped me. You know. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michael. Uh, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> <laughs> whip it real good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Whip them hard. But yeah. for you, okay? Do one for me. I'll get it for you. Yeah. So there's actually another species <laughs> that uh, the ones are affecting. Um, it's, uh, it's called the Miami Blue Butterfly. The Miami Blue Butterfly lays their eggs on a, on a plant called a uh, knicker bean. I think it's called knicker bean. Okay. And what happens is the ones eat those plants. So what happens is that the, the butterfly can't, eat, can't lay the eggs on those plants anymore because there's nothing to lay it on. Oh, is it, what is it? The milkweed? No. No, it's called, I think it's called knicker bean. Knicker bean I plant. Think, I think it's called knicker bean okay. plant, if I'm correct. So in Bahia Onda, down in the Keys, they're well known in that area, you know, and they started seeing less and less of these uh, butterflies. butterflies. So they did research, they found out that the ones are eating all those plants, so they have nowhere to lay their eggs. And the Miami blue butterfly is a native species, which is a beautiful butterfly. Do you know how they got here? The ones were first um, noticed in South Florida in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. Pet trade market had a lot to do with it. Okay, you know, same thing with the pythons. Same thing with the pythons. Mm -hmm. You know, they brought them as pets, you know, they got too big. Uh, residents let them go because they didn't know how to handle it or how to take care of it or they couldn't take care of them. So just releasing and releasing and releasing, you know, eventually they become an infestation, you know. They start mating and, the, like, you know, the iguanas lay 20 to 70 eggs a year. Wow. You know, so that's and just... And there's thousands of them. Yeah. So imagine one female laying 20 to 70 eggs a year. Multiply that by how many females are in South Florida. It's yeah. impossible it's a to never count. Ending. Yeah, and it's not something, let's say, that people want to do, go and catch iguanas and control them. Exactly. But it's something that has created a problem that if they don't stop it and there's not more of you guys or guys that do what you do exactly. then it becomes a really massive huge problem yeah. for for yeah. south florida yeah i mean since we started we've removed over three thousand iguanas. wow you know, at least we, we lost count honestly but yeah. over over three thousand iguanas we've removed you gotta look at your invoices yeah, yeah right Quick, quickbooks quickbooks.com yeah right <laughs> You know, so we moved over 3,000 iguanas and when I keep going, we want to educate everybody to just, just so they know the negative impact that they're causing to South Florida, to our agriculture, to our ecosystem, to our native species. That's crazy. No, I'm glad you guys got into that. And and tell me how you got into other pests like raccoons and snakes. It just yeah. happened. Yeah, it just happened. You know, we, we added it as a as an extra service, you mm -hmm. know, because it all fits one and one together. Uh -huh. So, you know, we've had issues with raccoons inside attics, you know, that they find some kind of hole on the roof or on their side of the, of the they roof. They crawl in. They crawl in. They leave. They have the babies in there, and then the the clients at night they hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good, right? Crazy. Is that good? Yeah, yeah. It sound <laughs> it, it, it could sound like rats. You yeah, know? exactly. Heavier rats. You know, and they're freaking out. Like, hey, they're sleeping in my attic. I'm like, I'm not going up there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, I'll go up there with flashlights. I'll take a look. You know, we'll set it up. You know, we'll remove whatever's up there. You know, we'll close off the entry point of the raccoons. You know, so, so they can't get back. Exactly. Yeah, raccoons are good. Raccoons are a native species, and actually. Raccoons is a huge beneficial to our ecosystem. They actually eat iguanas. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's cool that you guys have been able to expand yeah. on what you guys have done, starting with, you know, from landscaping to an opportunity controlling pests, yeah. you know, as, let's say, uh, iguanas. And then from there, you branched out into other things. Yeah. What's next for you guys? What do you feel like is, a, is another animal you'll be capturing? Honestly, like, we want to focus on... Um, as much as we do on the iguanas, on the Burmese python, you know, that's another invasive species causing a huge negative impact to our Everglades. You know, they're eating everything, you know. There's people catching out there huge. They just set a world record of, I think, a 19-footer, I think it was. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, that'll, eat a hu that'll eat humans. Yeah, for sure, definitely. I mean, they eat, they eat alligators, you know. There's times that the big pythons could eat a smaller alligator. 
If you guys are enjoying the content that we're putting out here on the Plant Movement Podcast, make sure to subscribe and follow, giving us a five-star review. It really goes a long way. Also, share it with someone that can benefit from this content. As always, we want to continue connecting you with people in the green industry. And make sure you get in touch if you want to jump on the podcast. Just cool. like the, the python, there's not, they don't have many predators. Well, the alligator, to me, is a big predator for the Burmese python, but up to what size? You know, Just like the iguana. The iguana has very little predators. You know, they have hawks, they have owls will eat smaller iguanas. There's a raccoon. A raccoon definitely will eat but, some. But I feel like a raccoon wouldn't wouldn't be like a like a main predator. It's not like that the raccoons are after iguanas. Well, you know what plus is that um iguanas sleep on the trees at night. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't sleep in the burrows. People are, are mis misinformed about that. So after iguanas are doing their day pooping in your pools and you know, digging the burrows and destroying mm-hmm. your structures, they climb up trees high at night, you know, to hide from predators. But you know, mostly raccoons are are really active at night. So the raccoons will climb the trees at night and if they want to sleep, he's gonna grab them, he's gonna eat them alive. Well I would feel uh, the, the the raccoon better have a tight grip because those iguanas they can move. Man. They're fast. Yeah, they're, they're fast. They have their big tail. They can, you know, move their body like a, you know, like a snake. Yeah, I mean, so, a smaller iguanas they could grab. You know, the bigger ones, like a six footers, they have no chance. You know, because I've had trouble with those six foot iguanas. You know, they're strong. They're yeah. strong. I they're bet a six strong. foot. Has, <laughs> that's yeah, a big boy. Yeah. Probably what weighs forty pounds. I think up to twenty pounds. 20 pounds. They, 20, 20 25 pounds, pounds yeah. is the max. The max iguanas grow are are six foot, six feet. Okay. And they weigh up to I think twenty twenty five pounds. Are there different species of iguanas? In South Florida, there's only two invasive species. There's a black spiny tail iguana, and then there's a green iguana. Okay, those so are the two I've main, seen both of those. Yeah, yeah, those are the two main invasive species in South Florida. And there's a lot of different lizards. Yeah. Like here, even at the farm, we have the black lizard that has like an orange head. Orange. Oh, the retagama. Mm-hmm. That's what it's called? I think it's called the retagama, yeah. I'm going to start capturing them and selling them to the pet to the pet stores. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, man. And those in the millions, too. You know, those We have tails. them all over the place. Yeah, but they don't. But they don't eat the plants. You know, for us it's great. They eat the bugs. They yeah. might eat the plants. Yeah. So it's like, hey guys, have fun. You yeah. know, hang yeah. out. <laughs> exactly. They yeah. haven't become a problem. Exactly. And here we go again. You know, those things are multiplying like crazy. That's another one. You know, so eating all the insects. So our native species are always in competition to you know to eat. You know, same thing with the iguanas. The same exact thing. You know, the ones are eating all these plants and stuff. And our native species, what are they going to eat? You know, because. The population that we want to compare to any other species, it's getting, you know, it's getting really close to me. You know, yeah. they're just just like the python. Just like the python. Yeah, between those two, they're they're overpowering everything else. Like yeah. the alligators, is that considered native? I believe. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 of course, yeah. So even them, you know, there's not as many alligators as there is pythons or as as there is iguanas. Yeah, like there's know, iguanas did, all over. Did you guys say this? But where did the iguanas actually come from? So the ones were um, introduced mostly to South Florida through the pet trade, mm-hmm. you know, like I was saying earlier, um, mm-hmm. they had them as pets, they let them go, they got bigger. So they're introduced from there, but the ones are actually native to South America. South America. They're native to South America, you know, they're, they're good there. So the real blame has to go on those guys that brought them over and started and started uh, breeding them. Yeah, it's actually, their fault. and actually <laughs> natural disasters too, if you think about it, you know, in hurricane. South America, there's a hurricane, you know, the ones, you know, end up on top of a log, the log floats to South Florida, they get off, hey, we're here. You oh, know? it could be no, as they easy swim as, that as well. too. So. They do swim yeah they swim and they hold their breath up to 30 minutes underwater so. for real yeah they're, for me they're very interesting i see them they as are. very cool lizards yeah they're beautiful creatures you know yeah. and it's, it's 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 a shame that we have to do this you know yeah. but if someone doesn't do something about it we're going to lose our native species over you want us i mean they are beautiful creatures they're awesome reptiles you know but when it comes to causing a negative impact to our ecosystem and our environment you know we have to do something about it yeah 100 yeah, percent. no you have to you have to do it because if not it'll be it'll be the end of all of these different species exactly mm-hmm. and yeah. and without one species now another species is in is, is becomes uh extinct could become extinct as well exactly and just so much so what areas do you guys service for you guys listening just so if you wanted to reach out and use them for anything that you guys might need, any iguanas or raccoons or snakes or whatever, whatever shows up. Yeah. Where are you guys located? Uh, we're located in Kendall, but we service from Fort Lauderdale all the way to Key West. From Fort Lauderdale to Key West. So you guys cover a big area. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we cover anywhere, uh, coastal, inlands, you know, associations, residents, commercial. Residential, you know. yeah. Do you guys do like monthly things where you have like, like maybe like, hey, uh, I see some, but I don't know where they're at right now. Can we leave traps? And you do service like that where you come monthly? Do you do any recurring visits, like um, packages? Like how do, What do you guys offer like that for customers? You have 911. We have 17 <laughs> iguanas here. We need to get them out of here fast. You have those calls. But then you also have, hey, we're going to do the traps or we're going to do this and we're going to prevent. You guys use repellents. Do you do anything like that to prevent them from coming in? Yeah, so what we do for uh, clients is um, we give different options. depends on the situation. Mm-hmm. You know, some clients might have one or two iguanas. You know, so we might just do one month of service, which includes going once a week. 
Okay. You know, if they have a lot of vegetation on the property, we don't offer traps because a lot of times it won't work. Since oh, the, yeah, since the ones are munching on the plants, they're not going to the traps. Yeah, they're know. smart. They know. Yeah, they, they, know. Ha- they have a free, a free buffet, in other words. So there's not yeah. one thing that they prefer more than that, like their their delicacy, like their their preferred meal that mm-hmm. you guys can put in there you know, that can compete against the plants. Yeah. You know, what we've noticed is that the ones are very common. You know, we've seen uh, videos and, and done our research that they usually go sometimes on properties of our residents. They go through the same path, you know, so when they're used to eating a certain plant they'll go to that plant daily eat that plant go poop on the same spot in your pool sunbathe in that spot yeah, they have a routine that they do every day wow. sleep in the same tree they come down the same way they eat the same thing they poop at the same place exactly so for you know different occurrences we have differences different services you know so we might offer a one month service if you're highly infested we'll offer a six month to a year service you know depends on how badly infested it is you know we always give the best recommendations so you have the best outcome on your property because if you have uh, you know beautiful new landscaping you spend thousands of dollars of landscaping you want to see that landscaping yeah you know so that's where we come in and start eradicating all these iguanas you know another thing we another another service we provide that not many companies do is it's night visits you know so what we do is we go to properties at night with these headlamps that we use and we look for the ones at night in the trees they're sleeping in the trees at night so it's a much easier catch of course so another plus to that is if if you have a house that has hundreds of oak trees in the back like coral gables you know, which is one of the areas that we do mm-hmm. It's really hard to see those ones during the day because there's so much foliage, foliage. and you know coverage that they're super hard to see because they're not always on the on the ground. Mm-hmm. So we'll show up to your property at night with headlamps. We let you know, hey, we're gonna go, you know, because we do come with a pellet rifle. Okay. As you don't call the cops on us. Mm-hmm. We don't want to get shot in Miami. No, no, you, know? you guys have a guys. They have a truck that's wrapped as an iguana, yeah. and it's yeah. so cool. Yeah, you guys have to check that out. Check it out on IG. We'll, yeah, we we'll put a everything. Mascot. There. A little the mascot. iguana mascot. Oh yeah, on the, the window. Awesome. His name's Iggy. Iggy. Awesome. Yeah. Iggy the iguana. Awesome. I love yeah. It. So that service that we offer is a huge uh, benefit, you know, for clients, especially if they're highly infested with a lot of vegetation on their property. We we'll offer the same service, you know, go monthly or six months to a year. It's it's great, man. It's a great. I mean, people offer that, so it does help a lot. Oh, you gotta check out the box. Like a, a pool service or a landscaping service that you need to go monthly or every six months or you know something like that because they do come back and you know yeah, where they're like, to service a property. There's there's companies that, that spray mosquitoes exactly and yeah. they go it's it's a it's a biweekly type thing or every ten days mm-hmm. exactly it's something like that. The, you guys that have properties that are highly infested with them with iguanas. You can reach out to them and now you can get on some type of plan where now every single week they're driving by or they're setting a trap or they're doing whatever they feel that they can do to execute the mission exactly and 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 get rid of the problem exactly yeah so once they call you know we show up we uh, survey the area we look for iguana bur- i mean the burrows from iguanas mm-hmm. um we look for you know feces uh defecation from the iguanas mm-hmm. you know another thing a lot, a lot of people don't do that we do is that we don't almost time look up for the iguanas we look in the ground for their poop um, and what that does is help us locate more or less what areas the iguanas are at. And if it's fresh, if it's dry, and exactly. if they're there. Exactly. That helps a lot determine, you know, the infestation rate and how many iguanas you might have on your property. Why? Because they, they defecate that much? Yeah, they defecate a lot, man. It's, it's, it's really bad. Yeah. yeah and by the, size of the, uh, by the size of their feces, we could tell they're small iguanas or big iguanas as well. And does that like, uh, does, is that like acidy that it can like, like uh, let's say stain uh, uh, the pool deck and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, actually, there's been occurrences that they they defecated on pools, you know, like travertine, and they'll mm-hmm. leave they'll leave a stain. It could, could be removed, but that's another problem. Imagine you have to go out there every single day to clean the pool, you know. And if they actually like pooping in pools too, you know, we've had some stories from clients telling us that they wanna went to the pool, turn his butt to the pool, pooped, and walked away wow. like sassy. I'm like, does he pay rent there? Yeah, yeah. He's like, no. I'm like, you should start charging him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but it's just crazy, man. It like, is. It sucks for the iguana, man, because they are such a cool creature. Yeah, man. But it's like, guys, you know, stop having babies, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> for real, right? Good thing there's no welfare checks for that, right? No, what you guys need to do is come up with, if there's any scientists listening, any of these plant pathologists, we got to come up with something that is a birth control for iguanas. Or, or even a child support control. You know? Child support. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to open a business on that, you know? Because <laughs> imagine 20 to 70, one uh, female, we'll be rich. Yeah, we'll be forget rich. Forget the plans, forget the ones. Oh, man. What's our new business? Nah, but I'm sure there's something that that uh, that can control that. Who knows, man? But that's another business in itself. Think about that. You yeah, figure man. out a way to control iguanas, you know, because iguanas could hang out and could be a part of society at the end of the day and part of the ecosystem and wildlife out here. We just can't have an abundance of them. Exactly. can't have a million of them and, exactly. and the ratio of everybody else is 100. Exactly. You know, it's it's got to be it's gotta be balanced and it's just so imbalanced that's why you guys come in clutch and you guys do s- such a big thing for the environment down here in south florida that people don't even understand exactly really what you guys do and with the snakes yeah, exactly you know? yeah it's a love-hate uh, relationship you know like a lot of people oh, but I see, do I want. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, 
yeah. your dog's gonna get sick you know yeah. you could die you yeah. know but por encito le iguana you yeah. know um you know i had this other idea i wish you know it could happen but it's impossible you know like the other ones you catch put them in a big container and take them back to south america yeah yeah but the problem with that is uh you know infectious diseases you know if we take an iguana that's sick here in south florida over there it could cause a pandemic and but they carry they could carry salmonella how do they carry how do they get salmonella their poop has salmonella their poop has salmonella. yeah so if one of them, what also, okay, so... Yeah, if, they poop in the pool, you swim in the pool, you could You can get it. Your yeah. dog licks it, your dog can yes. can get it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And since they like to poop around pools, you know, it's, it's common. You know, a little kid, oh, what is that, you know, and yeah. touches it, by actually touches, touches his mouth. mouth. You know, there's health risks, you know. There's 100%. Health risks. So imagine if you have hotels and beach, you know, in the Keys, you know, they have pools and playgrounds and the ones are pooping there, it's a problem. It's a huge problem. Yeah, it's a liability, liability. risk as well. Yeah, you'll get sued for uh, the, for the whole place. Yeah, for iguana feces. Which is crazy, which is something that you guys are super essential right now, the way things are. You yeah. guys figured it out. You took the opportunity, and you guys have done something great with it. Yeah, man. Yeah. You guys have kids? Yeah. How many kids? Three. We have three, but we're a second. We're not iguanas. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to no, keep no, going. No, that's it. You we're not going to over that iguana Miami. birth control. I mean, Miami has enough right there <laughs> it is. I need enough iguanas. What I like about it is that you guys are building something together. Yeah. You know, so it's like you, you people don't understand when you have kids how tough it becomes. Yeah. You know, that's why when I see a young kid that has zero baggage, no kids no nothing you know it's like man you don't know the potential that you have by just going after the opportunities because you have nothing really weighing you down by your mind yeah. because having kids is 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 it's a whole nother job. It's work. And it's a it's a full time job. So mm -hmm. then now you tackle on either going and working somewhere or now working for yourself where now you have being entrepreneurs, you have so many things that you have to execute. And then a new idea comes to your mind, you're like, all right, I'm gonna throw that on my plate too, and I'm gonna try to execute that and get that rolling. We gotta do social media. We gotta go get this iguana. I gotta learn about this. I wanna take a course. I wanna go meet up with this guy that we can network and now we're in their pool of iguana catchers. So now we have one guy that knows that he has ten different people. And we're under his umbrella too so we can go and 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 create more like just building what is a business and life and children a family and all of that it isn't easy exactly. so kudos to yeah. you guys you. for doing that because a lot of people don't understand what that is but uh, i understand i have children myself so congratulations guys Thank you so much all Appreciate right it. guys we're gonna be posting their stuff down in the link below in the bio and uh, jump on ig so you can check out what they do you guys are fluent on ig and you guys are also starting a youtube channel yeah we have a youtube channel that's awesome yeah you have to check yeah. it out man. crazy stuff yeah, it's, it is funny yeah. stuff crazy yeah. stuff yeah. 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 we actually just did a video of uh, using us uh, drones to assist us in some properties for the ones oh what does it do? It finds them? Yeah. You know, yeah. so certain spots that we, we, we don't want to get to, to, you know, scare off the iguana. And we'll get the, the drone from a, a good vantage point, see where they're at. And then we'll go to that spot and have a good, a good tactic to take them out faster. You know? Wow. Yeah. So you guys have learned to fly the drone? Oh, you yeah. Know, he's an expert. He's yeah, an expert. I've had my drone for a while now, you know. Okay. okay. I go, man, you know what? Let me take the drone to work and see what happens. And oh, and then you're getting footage too that you can use exactly. for content, which yeah. is always great. Yeah, and definitely. those crazy escapes, you know, him with a 16-foot bird meets python <laughs> yeah, that yeah, just yeah. ate an alligator with two two iguanas whipping him on the side. You can capture that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah on the YouTube video, you can see the the python I caught. In, That's crazy. The eight-foot yeah. python, yeah. No, I respect that, man, because not everybody will do that. There's a lot of macho men walking around. Yeah, I'm Mr. Macho, yeah. but let a Burmese python, mm, <laughs> let a Burmese python, you know, pop out of the bushes and they'll be jumping yeah, <laughs> like man. little girls. Yeah, man. Because it takes it takes balls to do what you guys do. Yeah, yeah. So, what is one of the craziest stories that you can tell us in regards to catching one of these animals? All right. So one night we were uh, servicing a house in Coral Gables. I think in Gables Estates it was. And I got a phone call like 11 o'clock at night. He's like, hey. Uh, you guys remove one? I'm like, yeah, yeah. He's like, I need you to come right now. There's one in my house. You know, I need you to get out right now. I don't know what to do. It's in my, in my kid's bedroom. And, and in my kid's bedroom. In my kid's bedroom. How did that happen? <laughs> so I go, listen, we could be there right away. Where are you? She's like, oh, we're in Pancras. I'm like, oh, I'm like 10 minutes away from you. You know, we could be there in 10 minutes. Hurry up. Come, take them out. I was like, all right, we'll be 10 minutes. Yeah, you know, yeah. Send me your address. You know, so we went over there. You know, she's like, it's over there in that room. It's in there. It's just looking at us. I don't know what to she's do. She's freaking out. She's yeah. freaking out. Imagine. And it's a kid's room and you want it. So we walk in. We always walk in super sketchy. You know, like we yeah, walk in. Because you don't know what's going to yeah. happen. No, we don't know if he's going like, to, you know, jump on us or what. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, no, yeah. he's not going to jump on us. But we don't know where it's at. Yeah. And like, we don't want to scare it off to a harder position that we can't catch it. Yeah, exactly. So we, we were in the room for like 10 minutes looking. We couldn't find him. Like, mom, you sure it's in here? She's like, yeah. I'm like, I don't see it. Like, well, let me look again. So we look around and then we, we looked on top of his bed and it was right over his pillow. Because his, he has this, this pillow set uh, comforter that was all different colors. Okay. So it was camouflage, of course, into that wow. color. So the head was just sticking out behind the, the, the backboard of the, of the bed, just looking at us. And I'm like, look at where he's at. Oh. <laughs> 
All right, so we, <laughs> That's just, awesome. you know, we went carefully went, you know, with our grabbers. You know, we go with our grabbers because they have a better chance of grabbing him. What's a grabber? A grabber is like a long extension that has a, you know. Like kind of like, like, like to pick up garbage yeah, or a lawnmower? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay, yeah, something same, like that? Yeah, the same thing, you know. So it gives us an advantage, you know, to like get closer because if we get too close ourselves to the one, you're going to run off. So we went up to him, we grabbed them, and, and we took them out. That's know? crazy. How yeah. big was that one? That was about, it was about two feet. Two feet. With tail and everything, about two feet. Yeah, but think about it. That's scary for for her and her kid, you know. Yeah, I'm sure they were imagine, devastated. Imagine the kid would have went to lay down and, how oh, are you? Good morning. Yeah. But know? nothing would happen because they don't attack. Right? No, they no, They don't no. attack humans. No, no. They're not really known to attack. They're more to flee than anything else, you know. But if they get cornered, okay, if, if a bigger, if a Larger, when it gets cornered, he will try and tail whip because he needs to defend himself. Yeah, of course, defense mechanism. which is which is normal. Exactly. Yeah. Like when I grab him, he wants to bite me, scratch me, whip me because if I, if I grab you, then like you want to bite me, scratch yeah. me, whip me. Yeah. You know? And they have teeth that can penetrate skin. Oh, or? definitely. Yeah. They, they have do? these shoot. They have these sharp little razor teeth that's made to like you know just yeah, cut leaves. Cut. You know? Oh. Yeah. Okay. You know, if you think about a leaf and it's just a sharp, clean cut, you know, so that's your skin. You know, it, it they scratch. They have long yeah, nails scratch. too. Super yes. long nails, and that's another thing. Um, people don't know that when they want to poop, their tail drags along that poop. Oh yeah. So when you go grab the one by the tail, you gotta make sure you clean your hands. Oh. You know, because then you get some little poison like that as well. That's very true. Yeah. Oh, I want to talk about a service that we provide that I don't think other companies may provide. We put a um, like a clear acetate around trees so that the iguanas can't climb the trees. Oh, that's cool. Some people put chicken wire, which only helps them climb more because the chicken wire is like little. Yeah, it's like levels. It's like steps. Exactly. Exactly. So we put the clear acetate around it so that they, they slide. They can't go back up. So it's slippery. Yeah. And they can't. Yeah. Exactly. What is it like a hard plastic? It's it's like a very very it's thin. It's acetate. It's like a it's like bendy like and then you just put it around the tree and they can't climb up. Yeah. So and it's clear, so you don't see it on the tree. We actually uh, even installed that in, in like fences. Mm -hmm. You know, that has oh, golf yeah. courses behind them. You know, we did like a long fifty foot stretch because the ones we just went to the little holes of the, the fence. Yeah. So, so we provided we that. Put, yeah, we put that, and they want to stop going to their property. So you guys install that as well. Yeah, yeah. it's great from the landscape background. Yeah. You know, that now, you know that's, that's something that a landscaper would do. You would think, oh, I need to cover something. Let me talk to my fence guy. Or let me talk to, you know, a, uh, a landscaper, hardscaper that can come and do it for me. But that's a service that you guys go and do yourself. Exactly, yeah. That's the thing we forgot to mention. That we also do preventive maintenance. You know? okay. So let's say if we, we start doing your property for a month, or two months, six months to a year, when we're done and we know what's under control, we're eliminated. You know, we provide the service. You're just going one time a month just to scope out the area. You know, okay. and what that includes is just walking around, you know, looking at any entry points that might, the ones might come in. You know, we recommend landscape, landscaping uh, materials so they don't attract the ones to the property. Okay. So we offer all that as well, you know, to help the resident out. That's cool. No, you, you want that because if you had an infestation, you know what it can do, especially if you have losses as a landlord. Exactly. So you want to make sure they don't come back. Your neighbors might have them, but you want to make sure that they don't come into your yard. Exactly. Yeah. So we take a lot of preventive measures. You know, once yeah, from the trees, the fences, the, the the holes. You know, all of that is stuff that you guys are doing to prevent. Exactly. Yeah. Which is great. I'm glad you guys are doing that. I spoke with uh, a landscaper that we service at Ace, and yesterday we actually did a whole complete changeout order because the plants that they had there, the iguanas ate them. So they ex they actually ended up getting society garlic. Crown of Thorn, and I think Liriope is what they got because they told me that they're not eating those items. Okay. And Crown of Thorns, if, if you know what that plant is, if you guys do not know, you can Google it. It's uh, basically a thorn. It's a st it stems, multiple stems yeah. filled with thorns. They have leaves up top and little flowers. Yeah. Or I would hope they wouldn't eat that. Yeah, like Corona de Cristo. La, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then the Society Garlic, they have a really potent smell of garlic. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I guess they don't like that either. No, yeah. they don't. So those are things. So you're either stuck with thorns in your landscape or a garlic, garlic. smell. Yeah, yeah. There's also, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you could also install uh, bromeliads, uh, coontees, uh, I think Simpson stoppers, silver buttonwoods, firebush. You know, those are those are plants that actually that they don't like. That they don't like. So a good idea for someone that is in an area that they know have iguanas and they're looking to do a landscape. Make sure that you guys either talk to your landscape, you can reach out to them and just link up and get a good idea of what you can do before the landscape architect starts drawing because they might not know or they might not even think of that. And that's yeah. something that you really want to think about before you go and invest whatever you're going to invest into a landscape. Yeah, or just hire us and we'll protect your plants. There you go. They'll, they'll put that plastic all over the plants. Yep. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for coming today. Oh, thank you, man. I loved all the information that you gave us about the iguanas. I've been really hyped to do an episode about iguanas because awesome. it's a huge problem that I hear about all the time yeah. from my customers so or the customers that we service. So... I'm glad you guys came. If you guys are looking for anyone when it comes to iguana, snake, rodent, anything like that, give them a call. Call Michael and Michelle. They'll take care of you. Call them at three in the morning. Call them at three in the morning and just say, hey, man, I love the podcast. And just hang <laughs> up. <laughs>
Yeah, we are open 24 hours. So. Yeah. Oh, you guys are? Yeah. All right. So call the hotline yeah. and they'll take care of it. All their information, guys, like I said before, is going to be in the link in the bio below, regardless of where you're watching or listening to. All right. And thank you for all our listeners and our uh, people watching on YouTube. We greatly appreciate the love. All right. Stay tuned for the next one because it's going to be fire. Like you guys know. All right. God bless you. Stay safe. And you'll see us on the next one. Bye. For listening to this edition of the plant movement willie and eddie invite you to connect with them on instagram at both the plant movement podcast and a's ornamental nursery those links are in the show description please leave us a well-worded five-star review on apple podcast to help others find the show and remember to tap the follow button so that you'll be notified when the next edition of the plant movement is available